How's it going everyone? It's Sam. I want to explain why yesterday was so bullish for Bitcoin uh, and what a lot of people didn't see. If you don't mind, hit subscribe. Turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this. We're at kind of a key level as well, just in the short term, in that we had this downtrend uh, over the last week, week and a half, something like that, uh, last week. So you can see we got rejected several times right by this line. And then I, I plotted this before we even went up past it and we blew past it. Then we're coming back down. We just barely touched it. And now we're trying to figure out, I think, if we fall below it or go above it. Obviously, short term, it'd be extremely bullish if we bounce right off this line. Uh, and then it would be negative short term if we fell below it. So it's kind of an interesting level to pay attention to. If you want to trade this, there is a link to Marjax underneath the video. There's also a link to CoinW. I just set up a group with them where they give trade signals. You can see more information about that underneath the video. But let's just take a look at what's happened over the last couple of weeks. This is the ETF uh, IBIT versus GBTC, and it looks like they're going to flip each other here soon. And again, we'll get to what happened yesterday here in a second, but you really have to understand, okay, Bitcoin uh, is being bought up by IBIT, being dumped by GBTC. The last few days were terrible days for Grayscale. They lost a lot. Their, their holdings are falling uh, significantly. They're down 45% since the launch in January. Now, the price of Bitcoin has gone up, so their AUM is about the same. But they've had $13 billion that have left the GBTC year to date, which makes it the biggest ETF outflow among all of the 3,400 US listed ETFs. It's by far the worst, like 2x the worst. That is nuts. And if you look at the next worst, it's like three or four times more than T flow, whatever that is. So a lot of money flowing out of GBTC. Uh, and overall, yesterday was actually a net selling day. So if you take GBTC and all the other ETFs, we lost Bitcoin in the ETFs overall. Same thing with the day before and the day before. We've lost somewhere around $600 million worth of Bitcoin from the ETFs in the last three days. Now, what was so interesting about yesterday, and I said this yesterday, I said it, um, and we're gonna look at someone else that said it in a second, uh, British Hodel. You just tweeted about it, but I did say this in the videos yesterday that it was insane that we went down to 60,700, 60,800, moved all the way up to 68,300, and we actually had net selling. We had net selling from the ETFs. That's what I mean, not net selling overall, but we had net selling from the ETFs. Now, that means that there's some big player that's buying. Now, just to be clear, uh, Mr. 100 did not buy yesterday. They bought today, they bought four, five days ago, but they didn't buy yesterday. Mr. 100 wasn't the one that was buying. There's some other entity that is buying a lot of Bitcoin. British Hall explains this. Why yesterday's price action is so bullish for Bitcoin is this. It proves that the ETFs are not the only buy game in town. There are other buyers outside of the ETFs that are in play now. These buyers are powerful. They move Bitcoin's price up almost 10% while the ETFs were net outflow. We are going to hit a period where there, where uh, here where we have all of these buyers, known and unknown, pursuing the 450 Bitcoin that's being made a day by Bitcoin miners. This is exactly what I said yesterday, that there's not much Bitcoin that's traded. Uh, the ETFs were buying a lot. Now they actually had a net, outf a net outflow day, which typically the price moves with the inflows and outflows. But yesterday there's a big divergence. Someone bought probably billions of dollars of Bitcoin yesterday, or multiple people bought billions of dollars of Bitcoin yesterday while the ETFs shedded hundreds of millions. So if someone is coming in and buying saying, hey, I, I get that Bitcoin could fall further, but 60,000, 62,000, 65,000, that, that's too good a deal. I'm gonna be buying that up right now. They bought billions and billions of dollars and we don't know who it is. I haven't seen any huge movements from wallets. I I haven't heard any big announcements. It's just someone buying stealthily, stealthily, stealthy, buying Bitcoin in the background without explaining it to anyone. They're just accumulating more and more. And we can see kind of what's happening in the market too. Who's actually selling? Uh, James Van Stratton says, we're running out of lettuce hands. I called that we would see nearly three to four billion of losses taken on Bitcoin short-term holders. 
It was $3.7 billion, the second highest amount ever, just short of the ETF launch. This was predictable. So you can see this is the transfer volume from short-term holders and loss to exchanges. So they are transferring it over to exchanges, probably selling it, um, and they're taking big losses on it. More, more interestingly, profit-taking has completely disappeared. People are waiting for 70K plus to, again, take profit. So whoever's been holding... Even the short-term holders, though, uh, the short-term holders that are in the profit are not are not selling it right now. They say, okay, you know, I feel pretty good. I'll hold on to this Bitcoin until we're probably at new all-time highs, and I'll keep on taking profit. That's exactly what I'm doing. Like, I was getting paid in some Bitcoin, and around that $70,000, $73,000 range, I was selling some of it to pay taxes for that Bitcoin. Now, I'm just like, no, nah, I'll wait. You know, I have cash that I can use for the taxes. I'll come out of pocket for those. Then when we come back up, you know, I'll still, I'll start uh, taking a little bit of profit just off the table because I'm already keeping some of the Bitcoin that I'm getting paid, which again, it, it, for most people, it'd just be like net buying. But for me, like I'm I'm losing cash to hold onto this Bitcoin right now when we're in the $60,000 range. So the longer we consolidate in the 60s, the healthier for the next leg up. Yeah, so... Again, you can see these two charts really showing an interesting picture. People do not want to sell if they're in the profit. If they're in the profit, they're like, okay, we can run higher. These are probably the people that bought more recently that maybe are a little bit more seasoned, and these are the people that have bought recently that are just freaking out. The people that are that are selling it uh, that have just bought. They bought at seventy three because they felt FOMO seventy four, and now they're like, okay, I just can't deal with this. I saw twenty percent drawdown. I'm gonna sell. So it is interesting. Again, this was extremely bullish yesterday, and we don't know what's happening with the ETFs today. We don't know if there's going to be net buying or net selling. It looks like the volume is a little bit lower. Typically, we see lower volume days on Friday as well. I think usually Mondays are a little bit higher volume. So tomorrow might not be a huge day either. But keep in mind, uh, this has been a pretty bearish week, a bearish week for Bitcoin, and we're still in the high uh, mid I should say mid 60,000s. A couple months ago, we would have been very happy with 60,000s, especially with the kind of bearish FUD that's come out this week with the SEC probing the Ethereum Foundation with uh, a lot of short term holders taking profits, with the ETFs actually selling. Like, this is pretty good that we're consolidating in general, I think is quite healthy. Uh, and if you want to put in some trades before this next move in the market, again, there are links to Margex and to CoinW underneath the video, two of the best exchanges out there. Uh, Margex has insane customer service. Like you can message them and you get a real person within seconds. CoinW also very good. So definitely check out those links. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section. I have another video going over the various levels of wealth. For Bitcoin holders coming later tonight, be on the lookout for that. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.